Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. What up, y'all? Welcome to Issue 2 of the Spinner Rack. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside my boy, Bam. Brian Adams. And we are presented by Comics, Comics Remix. Remix. <laughs> so, we hope you enjoyed the first issue last week where we discussed bad... What the hell did we discuss? Oh, yeah, New 52 and Marvel, Marvel Now, whatever. Uh, this episode is part of a multi-parter, so bear with us, folks. This one here, we are discussing Amazing Spider-Man, more specifically the three-part series. The 697 three to yeah, 700. Six, well, was it six, no, 698. It's not 698. Oh, yeah. 698, 699, 698. and 700. The whole, That's basically, right. de- quote-unquote, death of Peter Parker. Yeah. Uh, fans have been up in arms about it, more so negative than positive. Uh, this, I'm going on by what I hear in the store and what I've seen online. No, I hear you. I, I realize I am the uh, exception to the rule on this one. I even went as far as seeing a video on YouTube of a guy burning his copy of Amazing Spider-Man. I saw that. That was just, you're stupid. I'm sorry, That's, guy. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. He could have probably sold that. I'm sorry, guy. If you're a fan, if you're listening to this, you're a moron. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sorry. You're just fucking stupid. Seriously, you could have sold that book. It's an $8 cover price. That, at the time the book was coming out the first two, three weeks, you could have got an easy 30 bucks for it. Easy. Easy. What are there, like five, six printings of that book now? Uh, Third printing comes out. Uh, Oh, we're only on a third? Yeah. Is that the one with Otto looking all like Spider-Man? Right, right. Back to the point. So this guy was burning a copy of 700, all right? Put it in a bucket outside because it was snowing. And you know what I found funny? It was a plastic bucket, yet the bucket did not burn. (laughs) And you know why I find this funny? About two weeks ago when I started packing up, like, um... All my stuff for storage or whatever. I came across a buttload of old mail and bills and all this stuff. I'm like... Stuff shredder. you gotta burn? Paper shredder was just coming too slow. So I was like, no, I'm gonna burn it. So I took a plastic bucket and I burned it. Like just like a plastic pail? Yeah, and I burned okay. the bucket too. So not like a heavy-duty paint bucket? Nope, burned the bucket too. Nice. Yep. Maybe so, it wasn't a bucket. Maybe it just looked like a plastic bucket. Maybe it had some of that like, shiny paint on it that just made it look plasticky. Maybe. But anyway, so this guy <laughs> burned his copy of 700 page by page. It was the longest YouTube video I ever saw. Wow, he saw. did it page by page, huh? Yeah, he did it page wow, by page. Wow, what a drama queen. He's like, wow, this book is horrible. I'll never read Spider-Man again, blah, blah, blah. See? It's like, okay, if the book is horrible and you're boycotting Spider-Man, like, oh, I'll never read it again. I'm done with Spider-Man. Why don't you go ahead and burn all your other Spider-Man comic books? You got to understand, like, I'm not... Or you give them to me. Yeah. I'm here and there on the whole situation, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But what I just don't get is how these people are like, oh, I'm done with Spider-Man, I'm done with Spider-Man. It's a comic book, first of all. And it's a... It's it's one of these... Comic books have certain characters. Batman, Superman, one of them. They stand the test of time. They're the icons. They're going to be here longer than we will. You know, it's a story. Stories can change. It's a constantly evolving thing. Hell, they'll probably reboot the damn universe anyway. What I don't get is... You know it's a storyline. Why would you get upset? And to the point where you're going to burn your shit. Okay, it's a storyline you don't like. All right, don't read it. Put it away. Wait till they come back. It's crazy fanboy passion. And then That's what so. it is. It's like in the 20s how you had like your, your crimes of passion where dudes would like come home and find their old lady banging someone else and they'd shoot them and they'd get off because it was a crime of passion. They're just overwhelmed with their emotion for Spider-Man as the case may be at this point. I would never do that. I'd put that shit on eBay. That's like saying, okay, um, Electra sucked. The movie. Do I go and break my uh, my Daredevil Electra Frank Miller statue? No. Yeah, absolutely not. You know? Michael Clark Duncan was a black kingpin. Oh my god, what a crime. Do I go break my kingpin action figures? <laughs> no. Like, it, it's just, it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? We're going to have to do an episode just dedicated to movie mistakes. You mean like Green Lantern? Totally. You know what? No, I'm not going to get into it. Forget it. That's a whole other thing. This one's about <laughs> the Spider-Man. So let's get into this Amazing Spider-Man 6 You know, it... Through 700. It was a storyline that culminated since issue 600 of Spider-Man. So they say. You know, well, yeah, I mean, so they pigeonholed it into the story. Right. But still, I really, with a little bit of research, if you look back and reread some of that stuff, you could see it coming. Mm-hmm. You could go back and look at that, and you could see how it was kind of going to happen, how they could have twisted that way. I even think, I mean, I, I picked up back on Spider-Man at like 692. As I mentioned the last time in our last podcast, I bailed out around Straczynski because I thought it sucked. Everybody I've, did. I've never come back. But yeah, this you didn't burn back. your books. No, absolutely did not. You burn, do you still have the Straczynski books? No, I sold them. Okay, but at least you didn't burn them. Yeah, I didn't burn them. I actually bought the Straczynski stuff in trade, and then okay. I just sold it to used bookstore. It's like, okay, this sucks. Get rid of it. Yeah. It's horrible. But I didn't feel like this has been that bad. And like I said, with you go back a little looking into the past a little bit, and you could see how it could, was going to happen. Mm. And I don't know if Slot wrote 600. 
I believe he did. Did he? I, I'm not sure. I but so. I mean, he yeah, did write. Writing it for he did write the. He did write Spider Island. Mm-hmm. Well, he's been on Spider Man for. And he did write the now. the follow up to that. Just everything with Spider Man using mm-hmm. Otto's helmet, right, to take control of the Octobots. And uh, I mean, I, how could you bitch? You could kind of. I thought I saw it coming. Like I picked up six ninety two around Alpha, mm-hmm. which was a horrible time to come back to Amazing Spider Man because Alpha, most fucking annoying character ever created, and he, I just he just sucks. <laughs> I, I'm actually reading Big Time, and he's redeeming himself a little bit, but that's completely off the point. And the point is. Amazing Spider-Man's final arc. Uh, I thought you could see it coming, uh, especially with that reveal. When I saw the cover of 698 and it was dying-ass Doc Octopus and he says Peter Parker, I knew that's what it was. Mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't, oh, he's just all like, damn you, Peter Parker, I'm dying and I never beat you. It was he had beaten him. Mm -hmm. Now, I think where the story kind of fails a little bit is that they really didn't portray... Well, you know, I guess it really didn't happen, though, till I think it was a story that should have taken a little bit longer than three issues. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, obviously they did it for a rush because it's 700. Right. Let's end it with 700. But I mean, that's a story that I think should have started in 692. <clears throat> it could have. They could have. They, they could have easily started it that way. Because what? A couple issues before that, you had the Ends of the Earth storyline that involved Spider-Man with the Octobots yeah. or whatever. It's just like okay, you could have had a few filler issues and then you could have went into it. Not have the filler issues and then give us a three-part. Thing. Yeah, it was 687. Was around the time. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't, it wasn't even 10 issues earlier. Right. So it's like, okay, you had to introduce Alpha Y. There better be a payoff to it. Yeah, I don't know. And then you gave us the two Goblin stories, which I have always been a fan of the original Hobgoblin. Same you know, here. But, Those are some of the best characters, I think. But, I mean, okay, you go from Alpha to the Hobgoblin, back to Dr. Octopus again. Yeah, Doc Ock was never one of my favorite villains. But to see him, like, I, I just thought it was a good story, but it was definitely rushed. They could have taken their time. They could have drawn out a little bit. I really appreciated the fact that there was some play off of previous things with him using the helmet. Mm. And they're, they're creating the link between their minds. Now, I mean, I'm not going to say, like, mind swap's kind of gay. It's, like, as lame as, you know, John Travolta's face off. It's, it's the horrible <laughs> concept. But, uh, <laughs> you know, for some reason, I liked it. Uh, there were so many people that were like, oh, you know, like you said, burning Spider-Man, goddamn Spider-Man, I'll never read this sh- shit again, screw you, Dan Slott, you know, Dan Slott should die. I thought those were hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it, it was funny. I, I mean, I can't believe you would make death threats to a guy over a comic book character, especially considering he's written him for, how many years has Slot been on? Amazing. A couple. But I mean, still, if you're going to make a death threat against somebody for something they did to a character, come on. You know? It is ridiculous. It Why don't you ridiculous. go after the guys who broke Batman's back? Why don't you go after the guys who killed Superman? Why don't you... Especially that one. <laughs> Superman. You know? The death of Superman, the comic book that broke death. I just... I don't get it, man. I really don't. Um, you don't You don't understand the reason to kill Spider-Man off like this? Obviously, the, the bottom line of it is money. Oh, well, obviously. I mean, how many people rushed in here and bought 700? And, and plus, it's like... Spider-Man, like I said earlier, is one of those characters, so... You kind of have to do something extreme now, because almost everything has been done. And like Nas told me through a song, "No idea is original." Yeah, no idea is original. It's like, what do you, what do you do? Hey, let's kill Peter Parker. You know, he's been dead before, but this time we're gonna find another way to do it. Has he been dead before? Um, yeah. Really? I think so. I must have missed that. Well, there's the Ultimate Spider-Man version. Oh well, died. yeah, yeah, um, he is dead. Ultimate line where death means dead. For now. For now, anyway. Hey, so far, man, I gotta give him credit. I know this is off subject, but the ultimate line has dead is dead means dead. Right. I haven't seen anybody pop back up. That's okay. You know what? No, I can't say he's been dead before. There's been other times where he hasn't been Spider Man. We'll just say like it's another reason for Peter not to be Spider Man. We've seen it before. How do we do it this time to like make it stick? Oh, let's kill him. You know. And then let's not. You know, I mean. That's what. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll yeah, we. You. That's. That's really more of a, for the second part of this, the, the switch over. But I mean, th- the story wasn't horrible. It definitely, I, I have to say a lot of my disappointment, which I haven't been very verbal about my disappointment in this, because I've been one of those people that's been a fan of it. I'm like, yes, let's do this. This sounds good to me. I will say the fact that 700 wasn't more of a, the whole damn issue should have been the, the closing yeah. of this stuff. There shouldn't have been these little, like... Side stories st- that didn't yeah. matter. Yeah, like side stories that made no I, sense. Don't get me wrong. It's nothing against the creators who worked on those those side stories. No, absolutely not. But not to, sh- not to shit on those guys or anything. But we don't need them. They could have put that in an them. annual or something. You yeah, know? of course. Like the story about the kid and his grandpa, who is the Spider-Man, in a Marvel Universe that's not the 616. Yeah, that took me a minute. I was like, what? Is this Uncle Ben? That's what I, I thought. I'm like, what the hell is this crap? 
But I mean, you know, it was a good story. He he crafted it well, going back over saying, "Oh, this has been taking place since 100 issues." You know, when uh, in 600, the first time Spider Man uses the the helmet. Right. To take control of the Octobots. Now, there is one little uh, problem with it is how many damn times does Spider-Man have to take over Octobots to where you've just seen this trick too many times? Right. You know, it happens in 600. It happens again in Spider-Island. It happens again in Ends of the Earth. I mean, you kind of like seen it coming. And then they really didn't clarify well when the transition seemed weird to me. I mean, I know that they showed... It's when, uh... In the fight with the Hobgoblins, he gets nailed by the gold Octobot. Right. Which escaped my mind until I did a little research on it. I'm not going to lie on it. No, the, Mine's on an iron trap and all the stuff. I gotta look back. The official stuff. switch over was when he tried to go back and he was like, oh, wait a minute. And the thing hit him in the spine. Mm-hmm. That's when they switched, but they didn't switch fully. That's when. So that's happened. where it started, but it wasn't completely complete until no, it was later I, okay, on. No, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm speaking backwards. I'm thinking in 700 when Peter was using it. And the gold bot hit him in the back. Oh, right. And he goes, oh, I have the titanium thing or whatever. Right, the it's shielding. Still, yeah, it still pierced him a little bit, I think it was. No, I, I think the whole point of that I was... Only, I only read crap comics once. No, I hear you. Hey, I, I had to go back and relook at him just because I just sound like a dumbass doing this podcast. If I did, <laughs> it doesn't all stick with me. It's comic books, you know. I read it like you said. It's you know every little minor detail is not that. Especially when you read a lot of comic. Books. No, that was uh, which I, as another thing I thought was great. I thought Peter realizing that he's like Doctor Octopus is like totally screwed him over. That he's in his body. That he's dying. Yeah, he's not going to give up. And he like assembles. The Trapster, Hydro Man, and uh, Scorpion. Yeah, you're like, why? <laughs> yeah, that was really like some choice guys to pick out there, but whatever. It's more like, hey, let's just throw these guys in here. Yeah. I never traps or what the fuck is that? <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's, that's beside the point. I'm getting off track. I appreciated how he like brought these villains together and they help him break free. And he's got a plan. You know, he's gonna he's gonna go after Ock no matter what it takes, and he's gonna save himself. So he thinks. Um, I appreciate the little scene where he died momentarily. I think that was in... I don't even think that was in 700. I think it was in 699. No, that was the 700. Was it 700? Yeah, it was like, he meets everybody who's died before. Yeah. Yeah, that was 700. Yeah, yeah where he runs into Silver died. Sable, yeah. and she's all pissed off at him because she killed herself. Yeah. So that he could take out Ock, and he didn't have the, you know... Yeah, the stones. And then he sees Captain Stacy and Gwen, and then Uncle Ben and his parents. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of liked that scene. I kind of liked the, you know... Right. Him seeing everybody, everybody telling him it was okay, you know, to, to screw up. And, but then ultimately Uncle Ben telling him, hey, you got to go back out there, kid. There's one more fight to fight. You've got to stop this guy. Right. And then, like, but then it's like, <clears throat> dude, that's not your decision. Yeah, <laughs> you, it's true. You, just go back. You can do it. Like, okay, and then why did you come back? Or why did you come back? Or it's like, why, is, Stacey, why don't you do... take this old, dying-ass, decrepit body and you go kick his ass? Yeah, really. Then you yeah. can make up Uncle with Mary Ben, you Jane. got shot and we still needed you. Why didn't you go back? <laughs> because if I didn't die, Peter, you wouldn't be Spider-Man. I'm like, that's a crap load of shit. And he's like, yeah, well, you know what? You were selfish, Uncle Ben, because when you dying, I became Spider-Man. When I became Spider-Man, my life went to shit. I had women die on me. I've had villain, non-stop villains. Aunt May's having like a heart attack every 32 hours. My right, life seriously. sucks. I gotta lie to everybody. All because I'm Spider-Man. All because you died. You're the selfish one. You fucking go back and be Doc Ock. <laughs> That's what I was. But I, I like appreciated the fact that you know, like it looked like your the hero was going to get like the happy ending, kind of if you can really call like a villain killing you, taking your life and body. But you got to go to heaven. I mean, I guess that's some kind of a payoff for a guy that's well, well pretty much continually you, got screwed up to that. Point. They say you don't want to pa- you don't pass <clears throat> on happily if you're not done with with life the way you thought. So I feel bad for all those murder victims. It was a supreme opportunity to change things up because, I mean, in my opinion, this is another thing I thought had gotten really boring about Spider Man building up to them killing him off and. Auto taking over is that his life had become like too perfect. Mm-hmm. The whole big time thing. It was too perfect. He has this great job. He's got a girlfriend. Everything's good. He's, He's an, an Avenger. Avenger. Yep. I don't know, dude. I. That's not Spider Man. Spider Man's you know supposed to be the beaten down, down, downtrodden guy. I will give Marvel credit. The build up to seven hundred through through media outlets and word of mouth was enormous. Everybody knew it was going to be a big deal. You know, everybody's like, well, it, the whole thing was Dan Slott running around saying, is Peter going to be? But Peter won't be Spider Man anymore. You know. Like, he's not dead. No, Peter's dead. Long live Spider-Man. Or something like that. Some bullshit like that. I want to know where the rumor came. And it was an upsetting rumor for me because I actually wanted it to happen. It's kind of actually what got me back into reading Spider-Man. And that was that Miguel O'Hara was going to be Spider-Man. I heard that rumor. <clears throat> no, I didn't know how they were going to do it. But it got me, it got me back. That was I heard that. I was like, wow. Because, you know, I was a young man when they did 2099. Mm-hmm. And I loved that Spider-Man book. That book was awesome. The costume was great. The costume There's not many times excellent. you can redesign a Spider-Man outfit, you know, and have it stick. That was just 
that was dope. It was an excellent look, man. You know, because I mean, he's had costume redesigns over the years, and they all suck balls. The only thing I would say that's in continuity that I like, as far as the different Spider-Man costume and fans, you could hate me all you want, was when Ben Riley took over as Spider-Man for a few months. It was the same suit, but it was more streamlined. You had the web shooters on the outside, right. and it was and the, just the, the gloves. spider. With yeah, like the, the, the two blue in the middle. Yeah, and then, like the mankind mandible claw. Right, thing, and then the almost like a gambit look. All the way. That was a subtle tweak. I liked it because it wasn't nothing heavy. It was like still Spider-Man. You recognize just with making it his own, which I thought was cool. I had no problem with that. The only other costumes Spider-Man wise that have stuck are characters that are not Spider-Man. Scarlet Spider's new costume. Hell, Scarlet Spider's original costume with the blue hoodie. I love how people clown on that. Blue hoodie, that's it? Dude, it's <laughs> fucking great! Look at it! It worked. It yeah, worked. Yeah, you know. But, whatever. So, and what was with the, the armor costume that he used to take down Ock back to the storyline? Oh. Uh, it, was, it was end of... End of end of the Earth. Ends of the Earth. Ends of the Earth. How was that thing? So let's know. take my let's take my villain's tech and integrated into this gay looking suit. It looks horrible. It even looks I, okay, I'll say this, it looked better than the Iron Spider armor. Think which so? I didn't care for at all. I kinda did like the weird little I like the legs. Iron Spider armor more than this ends of the earth. The ends yeah. of the earth made him look like a bat catcher. It made him look like Daredevil back in the day when they gave Shadowland. him that battle armor. No, I'm talking way black, before that. Well, not Shadowland, I'm thinking um God, I remember which I, I Like it was uh, it was a short time was it the fall from in the nineties uh, the fall from Grace that they yeah, changed the black his armor. And red armor. He had all yeah. black with a little bit of red on it. Was it was it black? I thought yeah. it was like a blue. It was it was black and silver. Black and chrome with a little bit of red. I remember that. I got the extra figure. It looked like that. Kind it was alright. Kind of. I want to say it was the Fall from Grace storyline. Right right around that period. But anyway, so 700, in my mind, um, great hype going in didn't deliver. It really didn't. Maybe because it was so spoiled on the internet, everybody, I mean, two, three weeks out, the entire book was online for you to read. There was definitely a lot of spoilage on it. You know, that's the one thing I kind of hate about today's media, is that it's made the spoiling of our comic books happen, like, instantaneous, because it's like, oh, big story, let's pimp this, you know? Like, would you have known Superman was going to die if that shit wasn't all over the TV and even on the cover of Time Magazine? That's true. Probably not, dude. That would have been a great surprise for comic books. And that was, like, really the first instance where you get what you have today. Or shit. Even with, going back to death the Superman because I remember that's when I found out was on the news and but still you knew he was going to die you didn't know how you didn't know when or besides you knew it was going to be a Superman 75 but that was it they gave you no other details you know with the way and I mean there's nothing against anybody this is just the way the world is now with the advent of the internet and everything being so at hand is they didn't have scans of Superman 75 online you had to wait till the book yeah no out. absolutely you know now it's just like hey let's be the first to spoil it let's be the first why it, it just sucks I, it ruins it kind of yeah, but then again, you do have the option to not read the spoiler. That's true. You know, but the thing with that is, people are always going to be like, "That's when the word of mouth comes in." You know, and it's just like, "Well, dude, you you almost know what's going to happen, even if you don't read the spoilers." Well, that's like you know, talking. that's the thing that sucks about the spoilers. As much as you may try to avoid them, someone that doesn't even read comic books that you know is going to come to you and be like, "Hey, did you hear Robin was going to die?" Yeah, it's like you know what, motherfucker, I did actually see that. All right, you don't have to talk. It's just come on, man. Right, right, right. That's a whole another thing in itself but uh i mean the ending like you said it was overall rushed especially 700 they packed so much just into 700 like him dying and revisiting everybody I their battle with, i gotta agree with you though like you said earlier i think they should have left the whole issue as the, the, the whole issue should have been yeah. main story oh i could understand maybe one backup story and then even have that backup story like six pages or something yeah that, that would have been fine but no let's let's not you know let's do an 80 page book and only 30 of it are we going to do to the actual ending story of main spider-man Right. There are going to be three stories of bullshit that's not, you know, just inconsequential to anything that's ever going to happen. Maybe. I, I do think, I don't want to say brave on Marvel's part, that they ended this historic run in defeat, kind of. The hero didn't save the day. The hero didn't get to walk away in the sunset. You know what I mean? It was like such a downer ending. Well, it, it, to a point. To a point, it was a downer ending. The, the only kind of uh, saving grace, so to speak, of the ending was when Spider-Man defeated in Octavius' body gets cock-blocked by the, the metal lining that mm-hmm. Superior has put in his cowl mm-hmm. so that the gold go- go- octobot can't get to him. But then when he realizes that there's still a connection, mm-hmm. and then he makes him, because he is in Peter's mind, so he does have Peter's memories, and then making him suffer like everything that Peter's ever suffered. Right. Every disappointment, every death, you know. Which, after like... How many years of battling Dr. Octopus now humbles him? Like, this is what it takes to humble Dr. Octopus is being in Peter Parker's path to experience it. So, I mean, it's kind of like, it was cheap, but I liked it. I mean, it was a good send-off. I, uh, I like the, at the end scene where Peter meets up with 
you know, Uncle Ben again, and Uncle Ben tells him, you know, he can finally rest. Right, right. And then uh, Doc Ock's whole kind of rather quick turn into understanding. Yeah. And that, you know... I tried oh, to kill you for years. It's like, <clears throat> oh, this is what it's like to be special. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I've killed you, Owen. I've killed you, and you're going to die. But now I completely understand where you were coming from. My and, bad. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of feel like a dick. So let me make this pledge to you that as long as I'm around, I'm going to be live up to the standards that you've put forth. And then once Peter dies, the cockiness that is Otto Octavius kicks in. It's like, well, not only am I going to live up to what you were, I'm going to be better than what you were. I'm going to be superior. Right. Now, real quick before we, we wrap this up, I want to go back and talk about the whole death threat thing to Dan Slott. Mm-hmm. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, I have Dan Slott on my Facebook, and we follow him on Twitter on the comments for mix page and stuff. And I just think it's funny because, you know, I see his posts and he's like, you know, I've deleted people who have decided to send me death threats. It's not that serious. When you threaten my family, you know, over a, ca- a cartoon character and all this other stuff. I was just like, people are really sending this guy death threats. That's hilarious. How stupid or how emotionally touched do you have to be to send somebody a death threat for killing a fictional character? You know, like, I just, I don't understand the mindset behind that. Fanboys are special. You know, but after, <laughs> check this out. Uh, towards the end of it, though, right before 700 came out, or right when it hit, I don't know if you noticed, but every time Dan Slott was in an interview after that, I kind of cocky, like, yeah, 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 and what? You know, it's like, oh, you weren't like that before the issue came out. But then, on the other hand, I uh, was talking with somebody else, and they were like, what if the death threats were just made up? What if it was out there... For hype. Like a publicity stunt? Yeah, to hype up. Oh my god, they're really threatening this guy over a character. I have to see what he's going to do to the character, you know? Now, being in the retailer game, dude, we sold out of that co- $8 comic, 104 pages. We ordered way over 250 copies. We were out of that thing by Thursday. It was in- excuse me, insane. And the thing is, this is where the media comes into play. So you have people coming in who you normally don't see. You know, they're not comic book people. Oh, you have that one comic where Spider-Man dies? Dude, you can't even tell me the name? You know you're not a comic guy, and it's people like you who upset me. When you come into the store, I get it, I get it. You want to buy a collector's item that you hope is going to be worth money? Oh, of course, everybody wishes they had something like that. But it's people like that who kill the market. It's the 90s know? mentality. Yeah, it is, totally. They come in, oh, I'm going to put this book away because Spider-Man dies. What they don't understand for them not being fanboys is that motherfucker's going to come back. Nobody stays dead in comics. Nobody. I guarantee your comic will be hot for two weeks, maybe three, maybe even a month. And your dumbass is going to sit on it thinking that years down the line it's going to be hot. When in two months when you turn around and try to sell it, you ain't going to get shit for it. Right. You'll be lucky if you got what you paid. <laughs> You'll be lucky if you get cover And price. then you're, got, you're the ones that are like, oh, comic books suck. They're just doing... Yeah, because you don't understand it. Comic books are like the stock market, you know? That's just how it is. That's the name of the game, you know? But, you know, for all... I mean, you make a good point there with the marketing thing with the death threats being made up. I, when you were first saying that, I was thinking to myself, well, maybe his cockiness was in, like, a response to these people, you know? Because when people come at you like that, you can only take it certain ways. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just like a game to him, like, a hey, big fuck you. Right. You know, like, yeah, I killed Spider-Man. What? What? But like you said, man, the marketing thing that's See, a brilliant I, strategy. I was too young. Well, I would say I was too young, but I wasn't heavily invested in the comics as I am now back when they killed Superman. So I gotta wonder if those writers in DC got the same kind of stuff. I'm sure they did. No. I wouldn't doubt it. You know what though? It wasn't. You gotta, you gotta kind of wonder. I'm sure we can go back and. I mean, the internet. Like I said, I would, I would, I was thinking about this earlier. I would like to do an episode just on death in comics because I really do feel like that's where death being broken started. Once they killed off Superman and brought him back. <clears throat> Everybody started seeing it all the time. Yeah, I or see different it. trends of it. You know, right, right, oh, right. we kill Spy- we kill Superman, bring him back. We break the bat, we bring him back. We turn the Punisher black for an issue. No, it was more than an issue. It was about five or six skin grafts. It That's was a little wild. Oh my god, it was terrible. You know, we make Spider Man a clone. Right. Well, at least with the Batman, the breaking breaking of the Batman, you knew it was temporary. You knew he was. Temporary. Oh yeah, totally. They said it from the get. They're like, "Oh, he's gonna have to take time off. Yeah. I need to find a temporary replacement." You know? I mean, it was just an attempt to be like, "Hey, let's you know try something different." Exactly. That, and it was to hype up Bane. Okay, if Bane can do this to Batman, Bane's not somebody to be. That's true too. Batman and Bane was Doomsday to Superman. Absolutely. You know, but then it's just like, okay. How unfortunately for Spider Man that he gets the jackal. Yeah, really. <laughs> I, I think it's funny though. You look at it, it's like okay. The first time Doomsday appeared, it's like, um, you you had Doomsday, you had Superman, they fought, they both died. Now Doomsday comes back in comics, and it's like, oh, I know how to handle him. Yeah, he you ain't know? shit. Yeah, it's like, dude, he killed you once, now he ain't nothing, he's a pushover? That's what irritates me, you know? But, you know, it is what it is. So, fi- final thoughts on Amazing Spider-Man 700. Final thoughts. Great hype going into it. Um, overall, once the entire storyline is done... 
because obviously it's not, which we'll get into in our third uh, issue. Um, once I think as an overall read, when you really sit back and look at it, it'll just be one of those stories that stand out like the 90s clone saga, mm -hmm. where it went on, and as it was going on, people were hating it, people were loving it, more hate than love. But then when you sit back and you look at the overall thing, you kind of applaud it for certain things. I think that's what this is. So you think 20 this. years from now, people will change their tune, and this will be a revered storyline? Yeah, because Kind I'm of sure how the clone saga is. Yes. I don't feel that way. I do, because I'm actually one of those few people who enjoyed the 90s clone saga a lot. I, I even wrote a blog about it. But um, Yeah, your, your blog inspired me to reread it, which I still haven't gotten around to, but I have all the issues. There you go. There's a lot of issues. That's a daunting task, I'll tell like you that. 40, 50 issues or it's something It's too like much. That. But, uh, no, I think people will look back on it with a grain of salt just because, I mean, let's face it, somebody will come along and screw it up even more. You know, they'll make another story where Spider-Man kills uh, Aunt May. He goes berserk and he snaps her neck and he sucks the farts out of her ass or something. <laughs> you know, and they're going to be like, oh, my God, he actually did that? Yeah, he turned Mary into Jane gets pregnant and he blows air in her puss. Kills her and the baby. You know, something. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, man, I think it's just going to be something that... No, but I, I think fans will revere it eventually. When they look back, when it's all said and done completely, and, you know, without talking about the Marvel relaunch and everything like that, you know, who knows, dude. That's going to happen. You think so? Totally. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. This Age of Ultron. That's a story yeah. for another day. God damn we'll leave that for another numbers. issue. So, for this, uh, Finarak, issue two, the Amazing Spider-Man 700 discussion. I'm Junior Ruiz, alongside Brian Adams. Say bye to people, Brian. Good night, people. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys. Well, Join us for issue yeah, three. We won't see you guys. It's superior. Uh, yeah, exactly, like Brian said. Join us next week, issue three of Spinarak, where we discuss the out, what is it, the fallout, I guess you call the it? The fallout from Amazing Spider-Man 700. Yep, the, the comic that is the superior Spider-Man. Yep, don't miss it. Peace! Peace.